Hey, welcome to another episode of Around the Tabletop with Blue Hand Gamers. I'm Simric Hughes. We have Colron, Catfish, and our special guest from Cthulhu Wars playthrough, Nandez TH. Like we said before during the playthrough, if you'd like to be, or if you are interested in checking out any of Nandez's streams, he streams on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash Nandez TH. All one word. It's me. All right. I'll hand the, the mic over to Catfish and he will direct us some questions and topics. All right. Well, as everyone knows, this week we uh, got voted to play Cthulhu Wars, so thank you for your votes. Uh, stay tuned to watch out for more votes that are going to be coming up. Uh, we should be posting what we're going to be playing here soon or what the, the topics or the uh, what the board game should be. So uh, be looking out for that. But to get us started off here, um, our first question is, uh, did you like the faction that you got to play with, or would you rather choose a different faction? I'm going to start out with our guest this time. Nandez, will you kick us off? Yeah, I mean, what wasn't to like about my faction? <laughs> I think I had the most overpowered uh, faction in the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that one's definitely... Just aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. So, I mean, I, I definitely like what I got. I played once before. I was the faction that um, Simric was. And it took a little bit, but once I got the hang of it, then I once I fully understood it, then I liked that one too. So, I mean, so far, two, uh, two out of two for me for the factions. Nice. Koran? Uh, yeah, I... I had a hard time getting used to the faction I was playing this week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I played Cthulhu the last time I played, and, and I enjoyed him, but uh, I had a hard time keeping up with the power that Simric had the, the, the time we played. I wish I would have played this time and been able to get up on, on uh, the power level a little bit. I understand completely. Simmer. All right. Well, I've I, my first time playing. I played Crawling Chaos, the same as what you see Nandez playing in the playthrough video. Man, I just I love that whole faction all around is well rounded. I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Crawling Chaos. I played the Black Goat faction during the playthrough and I really enjoyed it I did there's a few strategies I learned afterwards that I wish I would have learned and implemented earlier but overall it, it was a great great faction to play um crawling chaos and black goat are unlike great cthulhu they have algorithm or no i'm sorry equation based combat whereas cthulhu is just straight six so it was fun trying to find ways to make your power higher and your combat higher i enjoyed them and as for me you know i got uh the great cthulhu um i i really enjoy cthulhu i think it, i understand how he works a lot better now that i play with them and I definitely would like to uh, play again sometimes. So that way I could be the great steamroller. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to dive too much in that. That's going to lead me into my next question here. Um, what was your strategy to win? Simrek, we'll start with you this time. Well, my, my strategy this game was... I really wanted to start focusing on building up my, my great old ones, his uh, combat, by getting as many cultists, controlled gates, and the dark young, because all of those e equal out how much combat he has. And at that point, if I could get a high enough number, 
I wanted to start hunting down Nandez's hunting horrors. Because the crawling chaos is ability to just bring those hunting horrors into battle for free. And then his other ability where if my great old one is not present, he can pretty much negate a kill, a kill die. So I needed my great old one very powerful and I wanted to just start hunting those horrors down. Obviously that didn't work very well. <laughs> Nandez, what was your strategy? Um, once Simric didn't get the, whatever, the Yellow King or whatever that faction is, it was just strictly to keep him under control <laughs> the entire time. Um, I wasn't sure how quick you would catch on to the game because, I mean, it's it, it's not hard to play, but it takes a couple rounds, I think, to get used to understanding it. So I know how how his faction works because I was his faction last time so it was kind of just like well I know if he starts to spread more um then we're all going to be in trouble so I just just targeted him pretty much the entire time uh when you started to grow a little too much it was like okay well I already had so much power it's just like well just control both at the same time but he was Simric was de definitely my strategy keep him under control Cole Ron, what was your strategy when you played um well it was it was a different playthrough of course and um i was in retrospect cthulhu needs to get summoned fast and i failed to do that when i played and now i re recognize that but um I, I was the steamroll E last time we played, so um, I didn't fully actuate my strategy last time. So, but I, I have a strategy for next time. Would you like to elaborate? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. My strategy, um, I was planning on just coming out the gates blazing and just being really aggressive and just starting to attack. So that's why I summoned a creature or a monster really fast. Um, but then I realized that I should have spent more time uh, setting up in the beginning because Cthulhu needs that power for setup um, to be successful in the long run. And that would, that would have helped me out greatly. So my plan going in, being aggressive, didn't work out because I should have focused more on obtaining more power instead of just straight out going out and just attacking. I thought I was just going to go after Simric because I was like, I know Simric's going to be a threat. So it's, it's kind of funny that uh, <laughs> I was going after Simric and Nandez was going after Simric. And we kind of let him take the role. <laughs> you definitely got to keep him under control in anything you play. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's always my strategy. <laughs> All a bunch of bullies. <laughs> all right so my my next question is is uh did you like the way that the combat was resolved in this game um Cole Ron, let's start with you this time i love the way the combat works in this game i think uh it overall is really balanced between the factions they all have different ways of building their power you just have to figure out how to build that power and and do it um yeah it, it it's tough to catch up once you're behind i learned that when i played last time <laughs> but overall I, I think the combat is really well well-rounded simmer i think the combat in cthulhu wars is refreshing actually because it's it's a system I haven't seen very often. It doesn't matter how powerful your creatures are individually, whether they bring one, two, three, six, 17 dice to the battle. Because <laughs> ultimately, you have one number that results in kill and two numbers that result in retreating away, the pain. So it doesn't matter how 
how big, how small your person is, they can get killed just as easily as anything else. Nandez? Yeah, I agree with Simric. Um, I'm kind of, I, I kind of have a love hate though. Like, part of me likes it, and another part's like, like for instance, our playthrough. I was clearly in control the whole time, but when I fought you guys, it was annoying to me <laughs> that I still, even though I'd kill your guys, you'd still roll those pains, and then I'd have to be forced to retreat. Um, but at the same time, being on the opposite end of where I was the other day, our first playthrough, <laughs> it was nice to be like, well, you killed me, but I still, you know, here's these little goblins for you that can, you know, push you at least off my, my territory. Maybe I can go back in and reclaim it and maybe I'll do better next fight. I doubt it, but, um, so I kind of have like a love hate relationship with it. Yeah, I, I think uh, for dice being the way that the, the combat is handled, um, I thought it was actually very fair. Um, I'm definitely not a good dice thrower at all. I always roll crap. <laughs> and uh, I, I was surprised I didn't do too bad this time. And uh, for a six to be a kill and then a four or five to be a pain to move your opponent, I really thought that was fair rather than just having – one side of the die be what happens or two sides of the die. So I thought it worked really well. So uh, the next topic I have here is most of us probably thought that the crawling chaos was pretty scary and overpowering by, uh, by watching the playthrough and from experiencing the game before. Um, but do you really think that the crawling chaos is as scary as what they should be? Or do you think that um, we kind of just let them get away because we were focusing on other things? Um, I'm going to start off with Simric this time. So I edited this video. I'm almost done with part two. And I was obviously part of the first gameplay as well where I played Crawling Chaos. And Nandez and I both started in very similar ways. Now, I will say this. The uh, great, great Old One for Crawling Chaos has some very powerful combat build. It's based on the, the attacker and defender's spell books. That's how much dice the Great Old One brings. Then the ability to bring Hunting Horrors for a bonus four dice, two or four dice. They're a general beater, for sure. However, I honestly think the reason that the two of us played that class, that faction so well is because we, we started right off the rip just building controlled gates. And once we started getting more and more power during the gather power phase, it just steamrolled us to the point where we kept going far, farther and farther and farther. So overall, I don't know if I would contribute the crawling chaos now that I've had time to think about it as being overpowered. They are very powerful. But I think the power aspect from gaining power from gather power phase was honestly just fortunate strategy. I, I think a, another playthrough, no matter who you play, if you start that first round or two, Focusing on controlled gates, it'll it'll look very similar to the crawling chaos, and in, in particular from our last two games. I agree. Nandez, you want to take it away? Yeah, I agree, I agree with everything he said. Um, are they powerful? Yeah. Are they unbeatable? No. Um, now that I've played the game a second time. Um, I feel like I could use any faction, really, and at least try to control that, whoever has that faction a little more, just knowing, being more familiar with the game. Um, you just 
this is definitely a game you can't just sit back and I mean, you have to get involved. You have to, like some people don't like to attack because they're afraid of losing their guys. Don't, you can't be afraid to attack in this game. Like that's kind of how I see it. Like the more, the more hesitant you are, the less power you're going to accumulate. And I mean, the whole idea is to keep everyone else in check while you just maintain basically. Cora? Um, well, I think uh, Simric and, and Nandez's play style worked really well with that because they do tend out of the gate. Aggression is, nat- you know, it, I don't want to say it's natural to them, but they, they do play aggressively. Um, I, I, so it worked with their play style and they just, basically walk right into how it, how that faction works well. Um, all the factions have a particular lean towards a play style, I think. And I don't think it was overpowered. It just worked for their play style. I mean, now if it's a steamroller when I play it, um, then it might be overpowered <laughs> because I am the I am, I do tend to be less aggressive. I like to build my power first and then just smack people down. Passive aggressive. <laughs> that, that has been used to that has been used to describe me before. <laughs> Black Rose playthrough. <laughs> Check it out. Um, but I don't. I don't think that they were uh, overpowered. Now that I I watched it from an outside perspective, when I was playing, I was like, man, like I can't catch up. I there was no way I was gonna catch up on power. And uh, going back to the beginning, just watching the first few minutes of play, I was like, man, you're dumb. Why would you summon that strong monster instead of work on working on getting gates and kind of spreading over there on that side? I had the whole side of the map to myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I could have got all kinds of power by spreading my, my cultists around and then building some gates. And I could have built up pretty nicely and then been ready to go and had some monsters out afterwards and been ready to battle then rather than just trying to be aggressive off the rip and trying to push Simric back. So uh, I definitely threw myself in a hole on that one right off the rip. So I don't, I don't think that they're, they're very aggressive. Yeah. Do they have nice uh, abilities? Absolutely. Um, But I, I think that the way that you're playing against them can allow them to be that, that good if you don't control them early on in the game. Um, so this next one's kind of more of a a comment, uh, it's from Simric, um, said that something, something got messed up with Doom early on in the game. Yeah, um, when I was editing the first video, I didn't actually catch it immediately (laughs) until, until today. I was thinking about it earlier this morning and it was racking in my brain. So before I started working on the second video, I went back and checked. Yeah, the uh, the very first round doom phase, uh, Catfish had... No, it was the second round because first round you only had one controlled gate. Second round, you had that star spawn in the middle of the ocean. Your starting zone had a controlled gate. And then you had an additional controlled gate up higher. I counted your star spawn as a doom point during the doom phase for some reason. Mm. But I did double check and I don't, I'm not sure how but it got corrected throughout the game somehow 
but the first playthrough video has already been released that released today, which is Tuesday. And I, are, I don't really have any way of fixing that. But well, I did just get the, I'm sorry. I did just get the, we're running low on time message, so. All right, so my last question here is, um, why did no one really use an uh, the why did no one really use the ritual of annihilation? Nandez? Uh honestly, I really didn't feel the need to. Um like I had so much power, like it like I know there was at one point uh Simric was like, Well, if I had five control gates, I would have. Mm -hmm. That's you, because you want to end the game quickly. But me, I, I want to kind of, I, I kind of want to torture you guys a little bit. <laughs> it sounds bad to say, but I mean, it's kind of just like, man, I'm just like in control. Like I kind of like this. It was almost like drunk on power. I don't know. Um, and you know, I, I obviously enjoy playing games with you guys. So it's just like, no, nah, I don't want to like push us to to the uh to the end but i don't know that I mean, that's just kind of my I had, I had to bail right after that game anyway so it was kind of like the longer i played the more longer i could stay sort of thing but i don't know that koran when you played did you use the uh the ritual of annihilation i never had anywhere near enough power to play till you do it <laughs> I was kind of like also there. It wasn't really a, it was a, oh, he's in the way. We're just going to get rid of him. And so, no, I, I was nowhere near next time. Next time. <laughs> Simric. <laughs> well, I didn't actually use a ritual this playthrough until the very, very end. But yes, you you had 18 power. But then again, me saying I would have if I had five control gates would also be different because <laughs> you also had four times as much doom points as me. Also, I never had that many gates. <laughs> I think I think I only had like three, maybe four one time, but never got to keep them. By the uh, by, the gather power phase, I only ever had two or three gates, so I never really thought it was worth it to spend all that power, unless I had four or five gates. <laughs> yeah, to me, to me, that almost seems like a mechanic that it almost seems like a mechanic that would be useful if you know the game's going to end soon, whether you're first, second, third, fourth, however many players you have. It's almost like that last ditch effort to, all right, like I'm either I'm not, I know I'm not going to beat that person. So I'm going to sacrifice the power I have this round and then just deal with whatever to see if I can move ahead a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. But even, even in my position, I, I was too far behind. If I was, if I was in the middle, I still would want to try to work my way to your position as much as I could without trying to push the game closer to the end um because that power can be used to attack and get more control of gates i think the most gates i had at once was two i think i ever had three <laughs> so uh koran i understand your pain i mean power was a hard thing for me to get uh that's why i didn't really use it until the very end just to, to gain some points um, but overall, um, I think Cthulhu Wars was a good game. Um, I would like to play again, and I would like to play with Cthulhu again, now that I understand how it works a little better. I think that uh, I could rock a little bit better than what I did last time, because I know what needs to be done. Um, other than that, that's about all I have. I'm going to pass it over to Simric. you have any closing statements? Yes. 
Um, I would definitely love to film a uh, take two with all four of us this time. And I would love to play yellow sign. <laughs> You guys thought me playing Crawling Chaos was scary. <laughs> I'm going to get it next time. But closing statements, I would like to say, as always, I love playing games with you guys. And Cthulhu Wars is definitely on my top 10 list. Uh, happily be able to play that anytime with you guys. Nandez, do you have any closing statements? Uh, just as always, thanks for the invite. Uh, I always have a lot of fun, and I agree. I would like to have a four four player game on this to see if it's any different. So far, the two times that I've played it, it's been three players. So maybe that fourth faction, you know, makes it a little easier to control different factions. I don't know, but but thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And yes, I am down for a a four player round next time <laughs> all right you have any closing statements um um i have volunteered to be your fourth player speed bump next time we play i'm <laughs> sorry i wasn't able to make it this weekend but i will be there the next one um cthulhu is a great game um i don't get tired of playing it so I've only played it the once, but um, yeah, it's a great game. All right. Well, thank, thanks everyone for joining us for another episode of Around the, the Tabletop, uh, reviewing Cthulhu Wars. Um, as always, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping over and watching an episode of Around the Tabletop with Blue Hand Gamers. Uh, we reviewed Cthulhu Wars. I'd like to thank Nandez TH for joining us this week. Uh, we really enjoyed having them. Um, and as always, uh, like and subscribe if you guys like what you see. That helps push us to get uh, more content out there for you guys. Uh, stop over and see Nandez at twitch.tv forward slash Nandez TH. All one word. And I think that's it. Thanks for stopping by.